The Action News 5 Digital Desk. We are talking about John Morant's suspension. 25 games that just announced a short time ago from the NBA. And there's some conditions associated with his return. Let's bring in Matt Enfield, Action News 5's anchor and reporter, uh, to talk more in depth about um, this latest suspension. And Matt, I appreciate you joining us at Digital Desk. 25 games. So um, that effectively eliminates him from a lot of those um, accolades, those awards that you get in the in the postseason right tell us more about what your thoughts are with regards to um, this suspension and what it means for the season upcoming yeah so I think I said the day that it happened because it happened on Sunday I was anchoring that night I said 20 to 25 seemed appropriate and then you had wacky people that were saying half the season because you could tell that they just I don't know they have something against Ja for whatever reason and you know he's he's had a lot of people turn on him in the last couple of months and he is largely to blame for that and then you heard the report from uh Adrian Wojnarowski within the last couple of weeks where they're floating this idea of 17 games because as you mentioned a new rule in the collective bargaining agreement starting next year means you have to play 65 games in order to be eligible for season end awards like MVP, things of that nature, and all NBA. So I guess the thought there was 17 games and he could still be eligible for those awards if he played every game after he came back for the suspension, which was unlikely. But uh, 25 it is, so that's you know between a quarter and a third of the season. That is significant in my mind um as far as what it means for the team going into the offseason and looking ahead to next year obviously they're gonna have to weather that storm uh because we're not gonna see him until i think 25 games will probably take him into early 2024 in january in that range but uh, this team has had no problem winning regular season games without Ja the last couple of years. The problem, as we saw against the Lakers this year, is when they get into a postseason setting and it becomes a slower, kind of more half-court oriented game, that's when they've struggled with or without Ja. So to me, the end goal for them this offseason has to be improve in that facet so that they give themselves a better chance to win games in April, May, or June. And as far as how that limits their moves, I really don't think it should. I think they should do whatever they're planning on doing uh, with or without Ja, and then uh, just optimize the best version of your team for when he comes back. Yeah, I think anyone who's followed the Grizzlies, Matt, knows that the Grizzlies can play just fine without Ja for a certain amount of time. I mean, 25 games is a big chunk of time, but uh, they certainly have the horses to to do that and to do that effectively. Something uh, that was really ambiguous with the NBA communications uh, statement was this certain conditions that he has to meet before he comes back. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Um, I would like your take on it. It, it. Does that mean he has to go through kind of what he did uh, in March where he has to uh, go through some sort of, um, you know, therapy or something? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and remember when that happened in March, he went, but it was for like three days, and a lot of people were like, well, what can you really accomplish? What can you solve in that short a time frame? So, yeah, I imagine that something like that is going to be part of the condition again. And I remember at the at the exit interviews, I asked Ja, I said, you know, like Desmond Bain made a comment when Ja was coming back that he felt like this was the best headspace that he had seen Ja in since he came into the league. Um, and, you know, he said that whatever anxieties and mental health struggles that he was going through contributed to the first incident in Denver. And obviously, we all care about his mental health and we want his mental well being to be optimized. But when you say that and you say that you have been working on it to become the best version of yourself and then two months later you go out and you do it again it does beg the question of one if it was a problem were you taking it seriously enough two was that the real problem to begin with so yeah i imagine some sort of counseling thing is going to be a part of it i don't know some sort of gut safety education courses are part of it um, I don't know. And, and I imagine that I imagine someone will report on that at some point, but I, I believe that they are keeping that kind of vague for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that good point there. Um I I, I like that. Um 
finally the statement from Ja, it, it seems pretty routine. Um, although, you know, he is taking full responsibility and then at the end uh, saying, in effect, um, quote, I hope you give me the chance to prove to you over time that I'm a better man than what I've been showing you. Um, I, you know, I, I, we all want him to do well. <laughs> I mean, we all do. And I, I just hope that, you know, we, we're all hoping and a lot of us are praying that this, you know, setback um, is just a setup for a major comeback. Yeah. You know, on the statement, I think that we're on the point, we're at the point that, listen, like you said, like we're all rooting for him. He is one of the most electric players to ever enter this league. But we're also at the point where statements and apologies, with all due respect to John, they don't mean anything right now because his actions haven't backed it up for the last. Let's go back to March. You know, let's eliminate all the other kind of incidents that may or may not have happened or, you know, a word to this effect that didn't get him suspended. Over the last three months, you know, he's apologized and it, it, it's led us back to this point. So until the actions back everything up, I don't know that statements mean all that much. I, I will say, and I said it the morning that it happened uh, back in May, I do not think from working with Ja over the last year. I do not think that John Morant is a bad person, nor do I think John Morant is a stupid person. I think he is young, reckless, and making a lot of stupid decisions, but I know, I'm sure you do too, a lot of smart people that make dumb decisions. So I think that there is a path forward for him where he gets this sorted out and he becomes the player and the face of the league that we all know he can be here in Memphis, but you know, the statements don't matter anymore. The apologies don't matter anymore. You got to go extend a period of time without having an incident like this. And then we can talk about clearing your name uh, in the public perception moving forward. I agree. Yeah, words don't mean that much right now. And he's got to surround himself with some better people than uh, some of the friends that we've uh, unfortunately come to know, uh, one of which Devontae Pack. Unfortunately, I know his name right off the top of my head because of all the issues yep. associated with him. Matt, really appreciate the insight, and thanks for all that you do and, and uh, uh, online and, and with us here at Action News 5. Appreciate it, man. You man, Andrew. Appreciate it. Okay.